it says, then there is no way to explain how you're a Christian believer. First few words of the Gospel of John, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Same was in the beginning with God. In other words, if you do not believe that this word, written word that we have, if you do not believe that is the same as Jesus Christ, then you are going to be hard-pressed to prove that you're a believer, you're a Christian. Most of the Christian world does not believe the Bible should be taken literally. But I am a believer. Amen. Amen. If you don't believe the Bible is the word of God, then the preaching of the cross is foolishness. Doesn't make any sense. No purpose in it. And you have many people today in strong, high-held religious positions who do not believe that the Bible is the inspired, written word of God. It is God in written form. I myself believe that it is. If you don't believe that, then you don't believe in the miracles that Jesus did. If you do not believe in the Bible as the written word of God, you don't believe in creation. If you don't believe the Bible is the written word of God, then you believe in evolution or something else. You believe that we ascended up or descended down <laughs> from other creatures. If you do not believe in the creation story of how God made heaven and earth, then it's hard for me to believe that you're actually a Christian or a believer. You can't be a Christian and not believe the Word of God. You have to believe the Word of God. If you believe the Word of God, then it opens up great possibilities for us. Uh, the people that do not believe, this is shut off to them. They're never going to receive it. They're not going to get it. Because plainly, Jesus told them that healing is the children's bread. It's not to be given to heathen people. So the heathen are not accessible to the promises of God. If you don't believe in the Bible as the word of God, why would you believe anything that it says? Why would you expect to take advantage of the benefits Scripture says, forget not all my benefits. If, and healing is a benefit from God. If you do not believe in God as your Lord and Savior, why are you coming to church? Why do we have these great buildings? And why do people dress up in their little religious costumes and walk around as though they're holy if you do not believe? If you believe outside the Bible, then you're not a Christian. If you believe what's in the Bible, then you can say that you're a believer, you're a Christian. These signs shall follow them that believe. That lets you know how many people believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. No wonder there's no miracles anymore. It, you're hard-pressed to find believers. And then here you go. Listen to this, how horrible this is. You have faith teachers who've never been healed. <laughs> you have faith teachers who only preach on prosperity. And they've gotten rich off of it. But you know something, child of God? How can you get one benefit from God and not believe for the rest of them? How can you become a healer if you don't even believe in salvation? If you don't believe in living above sin. If you're a sinner, you cannot say that you know God because you don't. Can you say amen to that? Now, I'm not saying anything that's not in the Bible. Uh, if God had no plan to heal you, then I want to ask you a question. Why did the Bible say twice? By whose stripes you are healed in Isaiah 53 verse 5. And by whose stripe you were healed in 1 Peter 2.24. If God is not planning to heal, what's that in the Bible for? I mean, why did, why did he uh, have that written? Spit, uh, scripture was given by inspiration of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit moved upon holy men 
and they wrote as God told them to write. And so now we know that the Bible teaches expressly that you can be healed. And so here then comes all of these people who do not have power to heal the sick. They make excuses for God. They give you reasons why you're not healed. Well, I don't have a sermon on why you didn't get healed. I, I, and I never even thought of that, why you do not get healed. I've seen books in Bible bookstores. I've gone to great healing evangelist meetings, and they've written books on why you did not get healed. I don't have a sermon by that title because I don't believe that you have a reason why you do not get healed. If you follow man's plan, then do what I do. Hallelujah. Just go ahead and follow that plan. I've decided I'm going to follow the word of God and follow God. James 5, 14 and 15. Why is this scripture in the Bible? If any is sick among you, amen. Notice it says among you. If any is sick among you, it doesn't say go out and have a healing crusade among the heathen. You got to get folks saved before they can receive the healing children's bread. If you're not a children, how are you expecting to preach healing to them? Are you listening to me? You better preach some salvation first. Healing is the children's bread. Healing is not for casual watchers of the internet and casual members of churches who go occasionally. No wonder they don't get healed. No wonder they don't get a miracle from God. No wonder they're not prospered. This is not for casual viewers. This is not for people who can take it or leave it. This healing that God sends and miracles that God gives are for dedicated people who believe in God and God wants to keep you alive so you can keep on preaching His Word. Come on, say amen. It's all over me and it's keeping me alive. God wants to keep you in good health. I would that you prosper and be in health as your soul prospers because I want you to get out and tell people about this. Amen. So that they can receive what you, you received also. Listen, here, here's a few. Uh, Jesus did seven great miracles in the Gospel of John from turning water into wine, walking on the water, and, uh, and the raising of Lazarus. Listen to this. Uh, Jesus exhorted his disciples and everyone he met to have faith in God and trust in him. Faith is needed for Jesus to heal and for miracles to happen. We need faith to believe. But let me suggest to you that once you believed, why do you have to have more faith in order to be healed? Amen. You have to be careful here. If I believe that God is saving me and I'm going to live an eternal life, why do you have to have more faith to get rid of your headache? It seems like it would require no more faith. And that's my message to you today. You want faith for miracles? Get right with God. Come on, say amen. The centurion servant in Matthew 8.10 Jesus said, I assure you, I have never found this much faith. No, not in Israel. Because he said, hey, it's not even necessary for you to come to my house. Just speak the word only and my servant will be healed. Come on, say amen. The paralytic man at Capernaum, uh, Jesus said, stretch forth your hand. Amen. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said, Matthew 9, 15, your sins are forgiven you. In other words, Jesus, before he healed a man, forgave his sins. If you have sin in your heart, amen. If you have sin in your life, then don't expect the benefits of serving God. Uh, the woman with a continual hemorrhage in Matthew 9, verse 22. He said, you have courage, daughter. Your faith has restored your health. Your faith has made you whole. In other words, you and I, because we are believers in God, because we believe, it is that faith when we believe in God 
that makes us whole. It doesn't take additional faith. Amen. It's the faith you have already demonstrated. The Canaanite woman whose daughter had a demon, Matthew 15, 21, woman, you have great faith and, what, and your daughter is going to be healed. In other words, what he is saying, you came here and you believed in me first. Otherwise, I'm going to tell you, these miracles are not for people who don't believe. But because you came here and believed in me first, then your daughter is going to be healed and that your wish is going to come to pass. The demon-possessed boy in Matthew 7, 14. Jesus said, this, this kind goeth forth but by prayer and fasting. In other words, you have to have contact with God and you have to have dedication. In other words, what he said was in Matthew 17, 14, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, the smallest of all herbs, and then it groweth into a tree. If you have that kind of faith that is going to keep on keeping on, continual, you're not going to change. Is anybody here after you serve God and got saved, are you going to change your mind? Are you going to give up on God? Are you going to say one day, well, there's nothing to this. It doesn't matter. No, you're never going to say that because you have been saved. The term is born again. You have reborn. You've given up a dead life, a go-nowhere existence, a life where you were part of the ones numbered as going to hell. And I'm going to tell you right now, you're either one of us or you're one of them. You're a believer in Jesus Christ and the Word of God, or you're one of them. Uh, how about the fig tree in Matthew 21, verse 22? It says, you will receive all that you pray for if you have faith in God. He said, everything you ask God, it's going to happen. Master, the fig tree curses. He said, you can speak the Word, and it's going to happen. Amen. And, uh, and the daughter of Jairus. Jairus was a, a ruler in the temple. And Jesus, Mark 5, 21 he said, fear is useless. Fear is not going to get you anywhere. What you need is trust in God. I'm telling you right now, when you get in the middle of a storm, hallelujah. Jesus said, why are you so terrified? Why are you lacking in faith? In Mark 4, 35, what he's saying here, child of God, is you got to keep your faith in God. you got to keep on trusting. Don't give up on, on God. If the world has given up on God and the circumstances have given up on God and the circumstance says that it's impossible, you hold that one scripture in mind. It may be impossible with man, but with God, all things are possible. Can you say amen? Your faith has been your salvation. The leper that returned to Jesus and said, Listen, uh, I, 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 I want to thank you for making me whole. And he said, You know, it's not me you thank, your faith has made you whole. Your faith has been your salvation. It's what's done, Luke 17, 19. And to Lazarus, did not I, he said this to everybody around him that were amazed that the dead came back to life again. I'm going to tell you the same words today. Did I not assure you that, this is John 11, verse 40, that if you believed, you would see the glory of God on display. I say those same words to you today. If you believe and hold on to your faith, then you are going to see the glory of God here in the land of the living before your eyes, not just in fairy tales and, and bad movies, B-movies made about Jesus, hallelujah, by people who don't believe in God. Uh, that's what that's turned out to on these, these exclusive uh, history channels telling you inside information about what happened to Jesus what, what do they know? i got to ask you, what do they care? They're doing that to get paid. They don't know anything. They don't have a relationship with God. I'd rather t take somebody's word who hasn't been to the university of stupidity and the university of unbelief. I'd rather take somebody who just got up from the altar and started saying, oh, Jesus, I'd rather listen to them somebody who's actually been saved. I got to tell you, they know what they're talking about. Not somebody that read a book. Amen. Listen to me. What would you do? Read a book about how to get saved? You don't read a book about how to get saved. You get saved. Can anybody say amen? 
If you don't get saved, shut up. Go talk about what you know about. Don't ask me about brain surgery. I don't know anything about it. Ask me about the healing power of God. I can testify to those things that I know. Hallelujah. The Lord healed me. The Lord saved me. I can tell you about that. I may not know much about history, and I may not know much about geography. Hallelujah. But there's one thing I know. I know how Jesus saved my soul and healed my body. I'm a witness. That's all he asked for you. He didn't want you to go to Harvard Law School. He doesn't ask you to go to uh, uh, the University of, of uh, Deeper Misunderstanding. <laughs> Hallelujah. And get a degree from some guy that don't even believe in God anymore, even though he's the head of the Christian University. Listen, I've talked to the, well, I won't say it, but I have talked to some of these people that are in charge of something. They don't believe in God. They don't believe in an experience with God. They no longer believe. I asked the head of a major, major movement that is now uh, adding up to nothing since they decided to put a, a, a woman in charge of it. The Queen of England is in charge of the church. He doesn't, he, it was political. He doesn't even believe in God. I said, are you, how did you get here? How are you in charge of a university? that teaches people to preach the gospel. Well, can I tell you right now? I believe and I know and I know more than he does because hallelujah, I, I may not be able to conjugate every, every verb in the Bible in a foreign language, but there is one thing I do know. I know how to call on Jesus and he'll answer my prayer. Hallelujah. The reason that no more miracles happen in these dead, cold, mausoleum kind of churches with their big steeples and their ice-cold seats and their cold floors, the reason that they are not doing anything for God anymore is because they no longer have faith in God. They no longer believe the Bible is the Word of God. But I believe, hallelujah, I believe, the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise them up. Is there any sick among you? Let us anoint them with oil and the prayer of faith will save the sick. I still believe that. Hallelujah. I believe Exodus 15, 26, the great healing covenant. It was written, I will put none of these diseases upon you that I brought upon the Egyptians. What a promise that is. I don't know what the Egyptians got, but I ain't going to catch it. Hallelujah. Because none of those diseases are coming upon me. Somebody shout amen. If you're a believer, Mark 16, 18, these signs shall follow them that believe. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. The reason there are no miracles in 99% of the churches is because of this scripture here. They do not believe. Sorry. In other words, to find a miracle, they say you have to go to some harebrained faith healer somewhere. And they ridiculed us and talked about us for laying hands on the sick. Oh, he's a faith healer. No, I'm a Jesus healer. Hallelujah. My faith is what uh, didn't heal me because when I got healed, I didn't believe nothing. I was too dumb to believe anything. I was too young. Jesus healed me. Can you say amen? He said in Exodus 23, 25, I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. In other words, not only did he say, I'm going to put none of these diseases upon you. He said, I'm just going to go ahead and go the whole hog here. I'm going to take all sickness away from the midst of thee. Can you say amen? What kept them alive for 40 years in the wilderness? It was faith in God. Hallelujah. They believed God every day of, and every night. All they had to do to know that God was with them was look up. They could see a pillar of fire by night and follow a cloud by day. They knew God was there with them because they could see the glory of God. I say to you, if you believe, you will see for your own eyes and declare the glory of the, of the God that we serve is going to come to pass in this day and time. I'll take sickness away from the midst of thee. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 9. Is there a gift of healing as a spiritual gift? The answer is yes. If you have a gift from God, this is a charisma. 
Uh, that's the word, a charisma. Uh, no wonder I'm a charismatic. It's because I have the gifts of God. I have the charisma. I have the anointing. Hallelujah. You may not see it, but you might not be the brightest seer in the world. Hallelujah. There are people who know the power of God and recognize. I recognize the power of God. I recognize the anointing of God upon somebody. You better start doing that too or the healing will come to you. And uh, uh, somebody said, oh, there's no healing, Brother Ross. You're way out on a limb here preaching about healing. You're just another faith healer and uh, you're just trying to con people out of money. Listen to me. If there's no healing, why was Jesus wounded? Is anybody going to say amen? But he was wounded for my... Well, they say this is all about sin. No, read it all. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for all my iniquities, my evils. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Isaiah was preaching healing by the stripes of Jesus 600 years before Jesus was born. Amen. By his stripes we are healed. Why did Hosea say? Hosea is just a, another name for Isaiah, but it's a different Isaiah. So they made his name Hosea. Yeah, Hosea, the sixth chapter in the first verse. Come, let us return unto the Lord, and he will heal us. In other words, again, you have to get right with God if you need healing in your body. Why? If there's no healing, why did Jesus say, Luke 4, 18, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath sent me to heal the sick. Hallelujah. Why did Jesus say that? You believe the word? Jesus said that. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Right now, if you're a believer in God, you need to raise your hand up and say, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for God hath anointed me. Hey, hallelujah. You're the anointed one today. You're the one that has to heal the sick in this day and hour because these dead, cold, phony, baloney, dress-wearing preachers with the hats on their head, I got to tell you, they're not the children of God. You are the children of God. They don't even believe in the same Bible. They pray to dead people all the time. How can you, why are you searching for the living among the dead? You need to come out from among them and be ye separate and believe in the Lord. Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has sent me to heal the sick. Hallelujah. Why did God plant healing trees in heaven? If there is no healing from God, why did God plant healing trees in heaven? In the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river, was a tree of life which bare leaves, and the leaves of the tree were good for the healing of the nations. Revelation 22, verse 2. Hallelujah. You get to heaven, and you get a headache. Hallelujah. All that singing may give you a headache. Amen. You may get tired of hearing Abraham and Martin and John, or I mean Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hallelujah. You may get tired of you know, listening to Billy Graham preach for a while and get a headache, and you say, oh, I got, I got a headache. Give me one of them leaves over there, them healing leaves. Hallelujah. I believe God will do it for you. God promised it, and if he promised it, did he promise it and not plan to do it? Get your mind right here. Get your mind in the Bible instead of listening to all of these goofy people in the world. I'm going to tell you, doctors don't know everything, but Jesus does. Amen. Doctors will mess you up. More people are killed by doctors than killed by opioids. In this world every year, more people are killed by doctors than killed by guns and traffic accidents. You know, you take your life in your own hands when you go to a hospital. Now, they spend more money trying to uh, disinfect everything because they got every germ that ever been thought of living right there on that little uh, counter you touch. Oh, here, look, give me that pencil. Where's that pencil been? If you go f uh, check in, take your own pencil. 
Come on, say amen. You don't know who's used that pencil before you. you know, watch where you sit. You don't know who sat there before you. Hallelujah. You've got to be careful. Hallelujah. But we have an advocate with God who will heal you of all manners of sicknesses. And God even, God promised it. And God plans to do it. It's time. Listen, listen to this carefully. It's time to start doubting your doubts. Start questioning why you're doubting God. Why are you doubting God? Where is your faith in God? Why are you so fearful? Where, why are you so afraid? Jesus was asking this question of his own disciples because they were sitting there worried about Jesus. Master, carest thou not that we perish? How can you lay there and sleep when it seems like each moment so madly is threatening the waves from the angry deep? Hallelujah. And so they woke him up and said, Why are you bothering me for? I gave you faith for miracles. Use your faith. Command the wind to be still. But they waited for him to do it. Or what are you waiting on here today? Amen. You waiting for Benny Hinn to come to town and blow you down again? Hallelujah. What are you waiting for? What kind of, you wait, well, if he's here, that prophet's here, I know I'm going to get a miracle. No, you don't. Uh, the prophet don't have anything to do. If a prophet could heal, hey, if I could heal, what am I doing here? I'd be at the hospital today. Come on, say amen. It takes belief in God and doing it for God's people. I don't pray for people who don't believe for a miracle. I ask people all the time, do you believe that God will do this for you? If they hem and haw around it, they don't believe. I, I, what I always love uh, is when you go pray for somebody in the hospital and they get blessed and they look like they're going to get up out of that bed and run off, but the nurses are holding them down. And I've been in that position right here in town. And when I walk out of the room while they're confessing, Hey, Mary Lou, while she was confessing that she is healed, I walked out there and the family said to me, continue to pray for her. I said, I done prayed. <laughs> Listen to her. She's healed. But, you know, doctors and family can talk you out of it, especially if they want all your jewelry. Hallelujah. The truth is, child of God, you've got to hold on to God's word. And let God be true and every man a liar. Hallelujah. Start doubting all of these devil plants that the devil plants in your mind. He plants weeds in your mind to make you stop believing. And listen, I, I hate to say this. No, I don't hate it a bit. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Now, I may not be alive very much longer, but I'm going to tell the truth while I'm alive. Amen. Is that all right? The truth is, child of God, uh, most of our doubts are planted by faith sermons. That's why you doubt. I have heard things like say, people say, well, it may not be God's will to heal you right now. That's a lie. What? God's going to... That's why I don't believe in the tribulation talk. If the devil can't kill me now, how can he kill me three and a half years from now? Or seven years from now? Huh? Well, oh, oh but the devil's going to have power then. I thought he had all power now. I thought he's the prince in power of the earth right now. That's what they keep telling me. But if he can't kill me now, he can't kill me then. Can anybody see my logic here? Hallelujah. Well, it may not be God's will to heal you right now. Well, what's he waiting for? He died 2,000 years ago. He was crucified 2,000 years ago. How, what's he waiting for? He, what, next Easter? Hallelujah. Uh, what's he waiting for? That bottle of oil to get home, home in the mail? Amen. What's he waiting for to heal you? God is a healer right now. He's not going to be a healer. He's already a healer. He, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. God is not going to change his word or his will or change his mind just because you got a little problem and you're with your faith and you don't know whether you believe in God or not. I'm going to tell you right now, it's God's will to heal you when you get ready. He's not going to get whipped again. 
Amen. Well, if I saw Jesus suffer with my own eyes, well, that's it, Brother Ross. I haven't suffered enough. Because if I suffer with him, I'll reign with him. Well, Jesus wasn't sick. Come on, say amen. amen. Jesus wasn't sick. And if you want to suffer with the Lord, I got a whip upstairs. You know, I just come on out here. I'll, I, I, I can ply the wood. Hallelujah. I, <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got a whip from the time I wove when I was a kid. Amen. I could use that thing. I could kill a fly. Pow. Hallelujah. Amen. I could put a, a welt on your back the size of a nickel. Hallelujah. And not damage any other part. Well, you want to get whipped? I'll whip you. Hallelujah. And you have to sign a release. I, you'll sue me later, but I, amen. <laughs> you know, you're not going to, that's not, you're not suffering with the Lord. Oh, I feel the agonies of the cross. No, you don't. Not until a nail has been driven in your flesh. That's when you feel the agonies of the cross. You and I need to realize uh, that uh, 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 it may not be God's will to heal me. I got to ask you, what more does he have to do to convince you? He's not going to go to Calvary again. What more does Jesus have to do to convince you that he is a healer of your body? What more does he have to do? Does he have to come to you in a vision? Does he have to come to you in a hickamosai moment? Hallelujah. Does he have to come to you and, and you have that the feeling of goosebumps run up and down your skin? Woo! I felt that. Hallelujah. Now I know I'm healed. I felt it. Amen. Well, I got news for you right now. If I don't feel it or if I do feel it, if you feel it or you don't feel it, by his stripes I was healed. I don't have to feel a new blessing to know I'm healed by his stripes. Uh, why did Jesus have a healing ministry in the first place if he's not going to heal you when you get sick? Hallelujah. Though, uh, somebody said the will of God is different for different people. Whoever said that hasn't read the Bible at all. What is God's will concerning you? Well, you need to find out what that is. They say, well, there's a personal will, Brother Russ, and then there's a general will. There's a will for all people, and then there's a will for me individually. You grow up. Would you do that? What, God's going to change the whole Bible and change the whole history of the world so you can get an individual revelation of God? No, God is a healer. God is a healer, and he is a healer right now today. He's not going to become a healer. He is already a healer. Matter of fact, in Psalm 107, even before he walked here in the flesh, the word of God says he sent his word and healed them. Remember, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and he sent his word and healed them. Amen. The word heals. If you don't believe that the word heals, read it. It'll change your life. The will, they, well, the will of God is different for different people. One may have, listen, I've heard this until I'm sick of it. It's actually making me sick. <laughs> and I'm preaching on healing. <laughs> One person has more faith than another. One person is more righteous than another. Because he's righteous, amen. Well, what are you? What? <laughs> you're saying one person's more righteous than another is who are you to judge that how do you know well only we can know ourselves well I don't even know myself amen I don't know hardly anything about myself I don't know why I think what I think or do what I do and the only thing I can blame is the word of God because I believe that with my whole heart he sent his word and healed them Jesus healed all I don't know if that's working or not. It must not be working. Jesus healed all. How many is all? Huh? He healed good people. He healed bad people. He didn't call them good or bad. People called them good or bad. Oh, God would never do that for her. 
look how bad she is. Amen. Well, you're worse than her. What right do you have to condemn somebody else? Listen, Jesus will do the condemning. Amen. He's the one that does that. And when Jesus does it, people change. Uh, he heals all people, all really sick people, all people who are not so th sick. He uh, heals all, and he uh, uh, didn't have to get just near him and touch him or be touched in order for Jesus to heal them. They didn't have to say, I'm going out to Jesus' revival healing meeting tonight. tonight. Well, you know, he prays for the sick. People didn't talk that way. Everybody that turned to Jesus, he healed them. He sent his word and healed them. And here, we've got so many rules that are not even anywhere near what the Word of God says. We have rule. Who made these people? I'm sorry. You need to take a lot of your faith books and throw them away. Get back in the Bible. Amen. I, you know, I, I know that I honor all these people that have gone before me. I honor people like Peter and James and John. I, I, and and uh, 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 not the Beatles either. I, I, I honor uh, people that have known Jesus and walk with Jesus. I honor Jesus. I honor him. What they say, I'm going to listen to more than I'm going to listen to somebody that was born 25 years ago. Unless he's confirming what the Bible says. You know, we've had great faith teachers in the past. I don't read many things about miracles that they did. Are you listening to me now? Have you gone down this list of great faith teachers? Many of them have nobody recorded that they prayed for and God healed them according to their book on faith. I've gone out to great faith teachers healing meetings where they prayed for nobody except some general prayer. Ever, oh, I feel somebody over there near Albuquerque <laughs> has, has a backache. Ooh, see how the Holy Spirit works? Holy Spirit, I, yeah, I'm sure. Okay, that's a good start. Hallelujah. I'm sure there's somebody near Albuquerque got a problem with their back. Amen. But how do you know they're healed? And how do you know it's true? Amen. God can speak that way. I believe God wants you to walk up to somebody and say, you know that back problem you have? God is going to heal you today. Now, I know that's the gift of the Holy Spirit, but people don't believe in those anymore because all of the people who've tried to make you doubt. huh? God heals different people because different people have more faith or less faith or they're holier or they're more righteous or they went to Lourdes or they, they went to see the Pope or they went to see some healing evangelist. I got news, or I read their book. Amen. It always kills me when people want to quote a book to me outside the Bible. Well, you know what preacher so-and-so said. Listen, everybody pay close attention to what I'm saying. If it ain't in the Bible, I don't care what they said. Is that too cold? Am I being cold? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm in good health because the Lord keeps me high. Huh? This excuse makes me sick here I'm talking about. They say, I'm sick for the glory of God, and God is working out his purpose in my life. A lady with cancer told me that. And I said, do you really believe that you're sick with cancer for the glory of God? And she said, oh, yes, Brother Ross. I said, where's your children at? Instead of praying for you to be healed of cancer, I'm going to pray God gives you another cancer. Bring your children in here. I'm going to lay hands on them and pray God gives them cancer too. If it's for the glory of God, don't you want to give God glory? Instead of that one little cancer you got eating away your head, hallelujah, let's pray God give you another cancer. Eat away your foot. That way you'll have it from head to toe, the blessing of God. Listen to what I'm saying here. Because I don't believe that you're sick for the glory of God. Otherwise, some of you be walking sick people. One sickness after another. 
When you go through the prayer line, you don't go through the prayer line to be healed. You go through the prayer line to get another disease because it's for the glory of God after all. Hallelujah. No, we're not foolish like that. Men always want to ask one question. These are unspiritual men, unsaved men and women. These are people who do not have a moving of God in their life. They want to know this. Listen carefully. They want to know the cause of the sickness. Is it because we want to know who sinned? Did he sin? Did his mother sin? Did his father sin? Did his grandfather sin? Is that why he's sick? Is that why he's blind? Who sinned? Well, I got to tell you something here. It ain't none of your business. Amen. That's not a way to figure out how to heal people. It's how to figure out how to condemn people. I'm not here in the condemnation business. I'm here in the healing business. I'm not here to put you down. I'm here to lift you up. I'm not here to drag you into hell. I'm here to drag you out of there. I don't want to drag you to the cemetery. Amen. I don't even care how nice the limousine is. Oh, well, they got a better limousine over there than they, I want to be buried. I don't want to be buried at all. Come on, church, say amen. Well, they treated my aunt right when she, well, yeah, but your aunt's gone. Hallelujah. I don't want to be treated right by a funeral home. I don't want to be treated at all. Brother Ross, they're rubbing you the wrong way. I don't want to be rubbed at all. Hallelujah. <laughs> you need to get a hold of what I'm saying. Huh? If sick, I'm sick for the glory of God. That's hogwash. And then they want to know who sinned, who caused this. Can I tell you something? Uh, we need to take a simple course in, in uh, uh, microbiology here. Uh, we have things in this world called germs. If you get a germ, it ain't a devil. If you have uh, 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 relations that are with somebody who has a transmittable disease and you get it, why are you surprised? Well, who sinned? Well, I don't even care about that. The sin is not the issue here. The sin is whether or not you're going to believe God to be healed. Jesus never said before he prayed for anybody, you brought this on yourself. I hear preachers say that. You brought this on yourself. I hear doctrines say that. You brought this on yourself. Because if you had not done that, this would not happen. This is your quid pro quo. Hallelujah. You did that, and now you're getting this for it. Well, I, who would make a deal like that? Instead, child of God, what I want to pray is that you get saved and then you get healed. Jesus, you say, well, Jesus corrected that woman. Yes, he did. The woman found in adultery, but he corrected her after he saved her life. Go and sin no more. Didn't say she didn't sin. Go and sin no more. If God allow, Here's another one. If God allows sickness to happen, he must have a reason. That's a real jump in logic here. If you change that word sickness to sin, if God allows sin in your life to happen, he must have a reason for it. Well, God wants you to sin, to teach you a lesson? I don't think so. But uh, healing of sin is in the same sacrifice as healing of sickness. God does not want his people to sin. Then here's another one. And you know, I love that song. I even wrote it in a letter the other day. He's a God that you can't hurry. He'll be there, don't you worry. He may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time. Well, that kind of does away with the right now God, doesn't it? <laughs> if, I, if I'm praying now, it must be because I have a need now. Come on, say amen. I, I don't want to put this off. I don't want to suffer another day. I don't want to go through this anymore. I want to pray now and get it now. I don't even want, Jesus said, don't even say four months and then the harvest. The harvest is ready right now. 
Don't say, oh, well, I planted, so I've got to wait four months. He said, no, you can sow now. You can reap now. Hallelujah. Don't say it. Don't, don't be used by these clever little sayings. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. Well, don't explain it. He is an on-time God. You don't have to add anything to that. Uh, on-time God plus nothing is what God is. He's an on-time God. God knows when to deliver. God knows when to set free. God is able to do it today. Jesus was always in the right now. What time is it? Look at your watch. The only time there is is right now. There ain't no other time. Right now is it. It's not five minutes from now. It's right now. Amen. We don't have a time machine. It's not was. God wants to heal you then. God wants to bless you 20 years from now. No, it's a right now God. Jesus never told anybody, you know, come back tomorrow. <laughs> Make an appointment with my secretary. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus never, <laughs> I'm getting silly now. Hallelujah. But I've got to tell you, salvation is all mine. I'm not going to be saved. I am saved. When Jesus comes back, I'm not going to be more saved then than I am right now. I'm saved right now. To the utmost, I am saved right now. I am healed right now. When Jesus, uh, uh, if, if an angel floated through here and laid hands on me, I would not be more healed than I am by his word right now. All salvation is mine. All healing is mine. All deliverance is mine. It's all mine right now. I'm not going to be saved. I am saved. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I can have what God says I can have. God says I am saved. God says I am healed. That plus nothing means that I am saved and I am healed right now. Join hands with somebody if you would please.